Deputy Jerry Adams, please. I will go to Mila Margaret. I can call you. I will get Mila Falsha, Mr. Barnier, Ben Danu, Falsha go Harlan, go Balia Clear, go Gianna Rockdus, I will call you to make the Hurch Fast Nashok, I will see you. Mara Dirt and Con Corya is Misha Jerry Adams, is Octoron Hinfein May. I welcome your presence and your remarks on behalf of Sinn Féin, and let me tell you a wee bit about us. Sinn Féin is an Irish Republican Party, we're an All-Ireland Party, we have the largest group of Irish MEPs in the European Parliament. Sinn Féin has TDs, MLAs, Senators, MPs, MEPs and councillors. We have a significant mandate and are the only party substantially organised across this entire island. Sinn Féin is opposed to the partition of Ireland. We are a united Ireland party. We want an end to British government involvement in Irish affairs. And we're working for the unity of all the people of this island based on equality, respect and reconciliation. We believe absolutely in the core values of equality, liberty and fraternity and the foundation of these values in the 1916 proclamation. With others, Sinn Féin has played a central role in the development of the peace process and in the Good Friday Agreement and subsequent agreements. We helped to create and we were part of the national and international efforts which brought an end to conflict on this island not least with the European Union as a critical partner for peace over the past 20 years. For those who were previously denied the right to work peacefully for a united Ireland, the Good Friday Agreement commits the governments to legislate for that if the people consent to this. Sinn Féin campaigned, unlike yourself, against Irish membership of the EEC in 1973. Since then, every European treaty has taken fuller powers from the Irish state. So Sinn Féin wants a different type of European Union. We want a social Europe which promotes peace, demilitarisation, economic and social justice, international solidarity and greater democratic accountability. Today's European Union is wedded to neoliberal policies. These have created widespread hardship as austerity, deregulation and privatisation have undermined the social function of states and the rights of citizens, including the rights of workers. And increasingly, as you acknowledged in your remarks, people across the EU are uncomfortable with this. And this has assisted the growth of far-right parties which exploit people's fears. Brexit, in our opinion, is a consequence of that. During the Brexit referendum, Sinn Féin campaigned for a Remain vote in the North. It is clearly not in the interest of the people of this island, whatever their background, whatever their views, to have one part of the island outside the European Union and the other part inside. I know that you value the peace process and the Good Friday Agreement. I commend your support for that, as you say, going back to the time of John Hume and David Trimble. I am sure you are aware that any agreement by the EU that violates an international treaty which is what the Good Friday Agreement is, would contravene EU treaty obligations. But Brexit is not just an issue for the North. It will adversely affect our entire island if we let it. It is vital that its challenges are met on that all-island basis. It is clear, and again you acknowledge this in your remarks, as did the Taoiseach, that Brexit will have a serious and detrimental effect and is already having this effect on Irish jobs and businesses, in particular in the agriculture and agri-food sector. The aim of the European Union, if I may say so, should be to prevent a land frontier between the European Union and Britain on the island of Ireland. That should be the key objective and the priority, to prevent that land frontier on our island. And to achieve this, we have advocated that the North be afforded designated special status within the European Union. We also believe that Ireland should have a veto on any agreement reached between the EU and the British Government that does not include this position. 
designated status Mr Barnier is the best and the only way to ensure that the entire island of Ireland remains within the European Union. I commend it to you today. It's an imaginative solution that addresses the complexities of the problem. It does not affect the constitutional status of the North. That will only be changed by a referendum. Designated special status within the European Union is a position endorsed by this doll. It's the position of this Parliament. It's endorsed by the majority of MLAs in the Northern Assembly. It also recognises that the people of the North voted to remain part of the European Union. Is that just going to be set to one side, ignored, driven over? It's a solution being advocated by representatives of border communities, and some of them are here in the public gallery, and I welcome them. The Tory government in England should not be allowed to reject that vote, should not be allowed to set aside the way people in the North have decided. They should not be allowed to drag the North out of the European Union against the democratic wishes of citizens. Designated special status for the North within the European Union isn't about a hard Brexit or a soft Brexit. It's about the best interests of our economy, our peace process, and our people. It's also, John Coria, a democratic imperative. It's about retaining the freedom of movement of goods, people, and services on the island of Ireland. Any restriction, any restriction whatsoever on the freedom of movement would represent a hardening of the border. And believe me, this will severely damage social and economic cohesion but be unacceptable to people living in the border communities, but also to people right across our island. Special status would ensure the North's trading relationship with the rest of Ireland and the European Union, particularly in relation to business, tourism, the all-Ireland energy market, agriculture and agri-foods. All of that would be maintained. It's about allowing all of Ireland to remain in the customs union the single market, and under the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. It's about maintaining the European Convention on Human Rights. It's about protecting the rights of citizens in the North who have a right to Irish citizenship and therefore to citizenship of the European Union. Access to EU rights and services across employment, workers' conditions, social security and health care must also be protected. Now, Monsieur Barnier, none of this is beyond our collective wisdom or our ability. It does require political flexibility from the European Union. Now, of course, the little Englanders may object, but let me remind you and them that they are looking for special arrangements with the European Union for themselves. And there already are unique arrangements in place for other states. So the European Union has been flexible on these matters. There are different forms of integration and relationships for member states and non-member states. These include overseas countries and territory status, the European Free Trade Association and the separate customs union. In light of the provisions for Irish unity and the Good Friday Agreement, the European Union should not diverge from these norms. Sinn Féin, unlike the Taoiseach, would like to see a referendum on Irish unity within the next five years. However, the immediate challenge facing the European Union and the people of Ireland is hard to meet the threat of Brexit. And this is all about what kind of Ireland will emerge after Brexit. And the only way to positively shape that is through a special designated status for the North within the European Union. So, merci beaucoup, Monsieur Bonnier. I thank you for your presence. Thank you, Deputy Adams.